I started out back when I was probably about eight, nine years old in that range when my grandfather would take me out to the studio where he used to work. He waited till I was big enough where I could stand at the wheel and work at the wheel that he used to make pots at and it really kind of evolved from there. I'm Ben Owen III and I'm a potter in Seagrove, North Carolina. One unique thing about the Seagrove area of North Carolina is the tradition of salt glazing or salt glazed pottery. It was an easy and simple process that people could do to sanitize the pottery so it would keep people from getting sick, especially storing food or anything like that, that the, the food would not penetrate and go into the clay and then develop bacteria and then it could later come out in another batch of food and then it could make people sick. It was an easy technique for potters to work with because of the materials that they found, the, the type of stoneware clays in this region. And a typical cycle of making pottery, whether it's 200 years ago or today, it's still very similar to you know, what we've been doing over the last couple hundred years in Seagrove. Even when I was a teenager working with my granddad and my dad, we worked and did things and made things in clay, and we did it because they knew it worked and they just continued to work in that fashion. There were lots of times where we had some things that would come out of the kiln unsuccessful due to either structural problems with the clay or a glaze that did not fit the surface of the clay well. So from there, it really posed more questions for me over time that I thought, well, you know, what can we do to improve this or solve this problem? Those questions more and more evolved even from that point in high school up through college, so I decided to really study more and learn more of the chemistry of it and more of the scientific part of it to help hopefully remedy some of these problems. What my studies have enabled me to do is to improve materials where they will withstand and have a higher percentage or success rate. Studying some of the chemistry of the, the silica amounts and alumina amounts and the clay how much calcium or how much sodium or potassium that might be just naturally found in the clay. It's best to use at least three to four different clays in, in combination or mixture to make a good clay body. We take it to the potter's wheel and make it into a vase or a pitcher or a bowl. And then we'll take it and let it sit for a day and we monitor the drying closely and make sure it doesn't dry too quickly. But we let it dry to the consistency of say like uh, sharp cheese. Once the pieces are pretty close to being dry, then we place them in the pottery kiln, the oven, where we can temper the clay for the first firing. It takes about a day for the firing, and then from there we'll let it cool down for a day, and then we remove the pots and inspect them, make sure that there's no flaws or cracks or defects in the actual pieces, and we save the good ones and discard the bad ones. I could do a conventional pack of matches, but this works a whole lot easier. <laughs> When we do a final firing, or what we call the glaze firing, we load the kiln over a series of a day or two, and we slowly heat it up with a combination of hardwoods and, and pine as far as our fuel source. All right, let's stoke. You ready to hit it? Yeah, we're going to have to hit it. Let's hit it. There it goes. You're rumbling now. Once we reach that set point or temperature where we need to put the salt in, within just a matter of five or ten minutes, you have to basically just baptize the surface in there and put a high concentration of salt at one time. The salt, it becomes a, a liquid or kind of molten material and from there the sodium is going to separate. The chlorine part is going to just disappear and leave the chamber. The sodium is going to stay in there and it's going to cling to whatever it can cling to in there. It's going to be the furniture in the kiln, it's going to be the bricks that the kiln is made out of and then most importantly we want it to cling to the pots and create that effect. So in simple terms, it's just you're really coating the surface with a glazing agent that you're introducing into the atmosphere. Well, the larger kilns that we have, it takes about four to five days for the kiln to cool down just because of the mass and the, the retaining of heat that the bricks hold from the whole firing process. So we adjust the temperature of cooling down by dampers on the chimney and adjust that flow of the heat coming back out as it cools down. Sometimes you can open the kiln, it can be a wonderful Christmas morning, and it can be a delight to see all the work and effort that's been put into it over a few weeks or several months invested into one firing. But then you can have other examples where it was not a good Halloween night. I 
I think that's the most humbling thing about working in clay, no matter how many times you've done it, no matter how many times you've practiced doing it. I'm not doing surgery on a, a patient or somebody, but I'm doing surgery on clay, and I'm wanting to make that clay come out successful and be healthy when it comes out. So in a way, I need to learn more about my materials to the extent that I can hopefully be able to make the right decisions along the way that can solve some of these problems.